Well, to get into the top ten, it's, it's a miracle. He's made it. Incredible. It's a difficult thing to do. I think it's every player's dream to get it to the top ten. So courageous. He is If you want to stay there for a long time, you have to always improve every day. That is something very special. Staying there is, is a whole other thing as well. I think the first step for every player is to really get that first ATP point when your name appears. That's a very emotional moment. Top 100 is the next big step and then top 10. 50, 40, 30, 20. Then the hardest bit comes to be able to get to 10. And there are many players that have been in that buffer between 20 and 10 and haven't been able to crack it, including myself. So I know how that feels. I mean, imagine being top 10 in the world in anything, whether you're in business, whether you're in sport, whatever you do for a living. Now you're the one that they're coming for. You're the one that's expected to win. To do it over a decade is unheard of it. To do it for 18 years is superhuman. Rafa Nadal! When Rafa Nadal showed up on tour for the first time, we saw that there was something special. Rafael Nadal rewrites the tennis history books. The numbers, consecutive numbers in the top 10, even with the injuries. 912 weeks, 18 years. That is incredible. It's just an incredible achievement once again. Who's someone that you can't help but love and respect the way he fights and the way he brought it to the court every single day. Is, a, is an idol. Consecutive week in the top 10, just some crazy numbers. And the only reason he's out of the top 10 is because he had to have surgery. And if he hadn't had to have surgery, I think he'd still be in the top 10. I mean, what a legend. We realized very early that he, he was going to run through walls to get his achievements that he was after. He's absolutely superhuman. And one of the toughest to beat on the planet. So uh, that's a record that will never be beaten. And for him to do that is, uh, is why he's one of the, the greats of our sport. And, and therefore, he's a legend. Juan Martin Del Potro. Career high, number three in the world. Um, incredible what he's accomplished with having Murray, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer. You know, unfortunately, the end of his career was uh, was affected by uh, by his uh, by his injuries. I think he would have been the big disruptor in the big four, uh, and he would have won multiple majors. Would he have been healthy? Stand the man Wawrinka is overlooked in his achievements uh, because he wasn't as consistent as the big four. Oh, he's been uh, able to sneak uh, three Grand Slam titles away from the, from the big three. Novak Djokovic in two of the finals, he beat Rafa Nadal in the other final. So Stan Wawrinka, I think, was the, the dark horse uh, in those three slams. Still proving that uh, the older generation uh, still can cause trouble to, to, the, to the young ones. Thomas Burdich. Ball strikers uh, and cleanest ball strikers uh, in our game. Career high number four in the world. Finalist at Wimbledon. Um, his best run at a Grand Slam. Huge effort. Beating players uh, which were behind him. Always in every single match. Always a dangerous opponent when you saw him in the draw. But yeah, one of the biggest hitters in the men's game. David Ferrer for me was one of the most difficult opponents to play against. He didn't give up one shot, one ball. When you played against him, you just knew he was never going to go away. He was a grinder, he was somebody who would just not give you absolutely anything. He, number three in the world was his high. Also 54 top 10 wins in his career. And uh, something that a lot of players should look for, how what fighting spirit means on the, on the tennis court. Joe Wilfred Songa. Incredibly talented player who has who's been dealing with a lot of injuries uh, throughout his career. Five in the world, has wins over Federer, Djokovic and Nadal. 45 top 10 wins, that's pretty impressive. But what I like most, I think, was his celebration after his win. Joe Wilfred Songa! I think everyone's going to remember that and how entertaining he was to watch. Davidenko was like the human wall. One of the fastest players on, uh, on tour. Somebody who, who would just really take the ball so early and make you run, run, run. One of the most difficult matches I ever played in my life. Winning the end of season championships in London. Beating Del Portro in that final. It was the first year that it was in London at the O2 and it was such a great atmosphere. Fantastic player, it was like the metronome. There was no holes on the back of the court. His game was based on, uh, on big surf and uh, 
and, uh, and forehand. He's been able to play on all surfaces, so uh, very consistent. Uh. Multiple times in finals, the Australian Open, uh, also in the finals at Wimbledon. I mean, just a great serve and volley attacking player. Um, someone who has great consistency. His pairing with Goran Ivanisevic uh, took him to, uh, to a US Open uh, crown and uh, that's basically uh, you know, one of his biggest highlights of, of his career. David is somebody that you don't want to see on the other side of the net. Now, Bandy, probably one of the most talented players out there never to win a slam just because of the depth of menace tennis. One of the few uh, you know, South Americans who can uh, play on all surfaces. He was the one who was able to beat Novak, Rafa and Roger in the one same tournament that nobody else did. 2007 Madrid, we know that is one of the most difficult feats in the men's game. He was so strong during his era and also he won the end of season championships as well where he beat a certain guy by the name of Roger Federer in five sets in the Far East. All I think about with Goran is massive serve. He had more than 10,000 aces in his career, which is absolutely amazing if you can get to that number. Not many guys have done it and he was the first one to do it, so that's incredible. You can definitely see and he let you know when, when he was happy, when he wasn't happy. When you do see a player showing emotion, it, it's, it's tough not to get connected to him. Yeah, Michael Chang was someone that I've played uh, a few times in my career and Man, what a competitor he was. When I think of Michael Chang, one of the fiercest competitors, one of the best movers. The way he moved on the court, you know, he's, he wasn't a big guy, he wasn't a strong guy, big as far as stature, as far as competing on the court. Should have gotten almost to number one, 51 top 10 wins. No matter what the score was, he was there till the end, fighting to the end. So just an absolute amazing feat throughout his career, it was so outstanding.